Hi everybody. So now we want to fill in the last ingredient in this principal component analysis picture of dimensionality reduction. And the idea, the question is, how do we relate the original features to these pseudo features or these principal components that we have found through this eigenvalue process? And um, the term that's used for this sometimes is loadings. The, the a projection of the original features into the principal component space are called the loadings. And let's see if we can, um, just to recap, the idea here is we have data in a high dimensional space. We have a low dimensional subspace spanned by these principal directions. We project the data into this low dimensional subspace. We look at the data there where we've captured most of the variance in it. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the original features and we're going to project them into that space. In the original space, the features form the coordinate axes. So there are k of them, and they're mutually orthogonal, just like i, j, and k, or x, y, and z. But when you project them down into this much lower dimensional subspace, they can't be orthogonal anymore. You can't have 15 orthogonal vectors. So you're going to end up getting a bunch of vectors which are no longer orthogonal, but which are the best projection of the features into this low dimensional subspace. So here's a picture of that in practice. This is the data that I looked at in the last lecture. And it's these are the two principal components for the data. And so corresponding to the two largest eigenvalues of the covariance matrix. And the lines are the 15 directions corresponding to the original features projected down into this space. And so, for example, if you look at this line, which corresponds to one of the original features, you see that it, if you look at the projections of these points onto that line, there's going to be a group of them over here and another group of them over here. And so in, for this feature, you would might expect to see that the points are split into two groups. And if you think back to the histogram that we looked at, we did see that for some features, the points were split into two groups. On the other hand, if we were, for example, to take one of these horizontal lines, like say that one, well, then you're gonna get points here, a big group, group of points there, and then a small group of points out here. So again, you might have them split into two groups, a small group over here and a large group over there. And so from this, you can see uh, which features tend to dis distinguish which groups of points. But none of them can distinguish them you know, perfectly because each feature one at a time can't possibly tell you enough about a whole plane's worth of points. So how do we find these directions corresponding to the original features? Well, the way to think about it is to imagine that we make a, I mean, the scores were synthetic features. Now we're going to make synth uh, some synthetic samples. So imagine we have a sample which has features 1, 0, 0. So this is a 1 by k vector. Well, if there were such a sample, it in the, in the high dimensional space, it's like the, the i vector for the first feature. And we could ask, how does that project down into the principal component space? Well, it projects down by multiplying it by the, vec by the matrix U, where U, the columns of U, are the principal eigenvectors. With eigenvalues U1, U2, and there might be more of them. We're only using two here, but there could be U1 up to US. So U, is a k by s matrix whose columns are s 
uh, principal eigenvectors for the covariance matrix. And this is the projection of the fake sample with features 1, 0. And you could do that for each of the features. And if you did that for each of the features, you could look at the matrix 1, 1, 1, which is k by k. It's the k by k identity matrix. And you could multiply it by u. And the rows of this matrix would be the coordinates in the principal component space. So in this subspace that we're working with of the fake samples with only one feature. So what, what we're really doing here is we would be saying, OK, there's a, there'd be a fake point here, which is what you would get if you just had feature number one. With, I'm not going to get the numbers right. but uh, And then you'd have a dot here. And so you'd have introduced these fake samples, each of which has a measurement one in one of the features and zero in the other. And then if you draw the line, which connects the origin to those fake samples, that corresponds to multiples of that uh, sam fake sample, which has only one feature in a one in one position and zero elsewhere. So in fact, the um, if you interpret the columns of U as the weights corresponding to the score, so each column of U tells you what how to weight each feature in order to make the score to plot the points in the principal component space. Each row of the matrix U is a particular point in the principal component space that is where a fake sample, which had just a one in one position for one feature and a zero elsewhere, would end up. So um, the, that's how you interpret the loadings. You, you, you make this uh, matrix of eigenvectors, and you think of each row as um, giving you a direction in the principal component space, which is the projection of one of the features down into this small subspace.